Hi, welcome to Stinty World video number nine, Abraham's Blunder. Abraham who? Well, I'm going to show you that by applying reciprocal thinking to the story of Abraham that we can come up with a completely different explanation of what that biblical story means. Now, I'm not sure I'm a believer in a creator, but I find the stories of the Bible to be uh, reflections of human stupidity more than anything else. And by reinterpreting the story using reciprocal thinking, a very different story is told. Uh, for the sake of narration, I'm going to speak as if I were a believer, just because it helps make the narration better. To recap the story, as a test of loyalty, God orders Abraham to murder his son, or sacrifice is the politically correct term. Now, I have problems with this, because we have a God who tells us, thou shalt not kill, is ordering hits on, on people. I mean, like a, like a gang boss. And if our Creator needs to detest the loyalty in this fashion, then our Creator obviously can't read minds. So that means silent prayer is really of no use. But at the last minute, God intervenes. I mean, how does He know that like Abraham isn't just calling his bluff, like hoping that the last minute God would be a just God? And if since God can't read minds, He can't really know if Abraham truly is uh, loyal. So what about Abraham? Why was he willing to kill his son, assuming he wasn't calling God's bluff? Promise of reward? Well, that sounds very selfish. Killing your son for a better place at God's side? Come on. Or to assure that he would definitely go to heaven? Well, what about your son? Okay, rewarding people for committing heinous act cannot be what this story is about. So let's apply some reciprocal thinking. If God ended the experiment before the heinous act was committed then the murder of the son was not the desired outcome. Because a lot of scientists, if they get the desired outcome, they let the experiment go. If they have to stop it early, it's because it was going off if into the weeds. That's typically why a scientist would stop an experiment. So I believe that God was hoping that Abraham would selflessly turn back and say, no, I will not commit such a heinous act, take my life in return for my son. It's a very selfless thing. That would have been the proper response to God, in my opinion. But because we humans failed the test, God turned to Satan and said, Satan, uh, these crazy humans are not ready yet. They have not learned the consequences of blind loyalty. If I wanted them to blindly follow orders without question, I would not have bothered to give them free will or a thinking brain. Satan, teach them. Teach these people the problem with blindly following orders. And since then, Satan's been laughing with delight. Hundreds of millions killed in wars, death camps, gulags, ethnic cleansing. And the Nuremberg defense, when they brought the people to trial, they said right, they were just following orders. Blindly following orders. So if there is a God, I'm sure that God's frustration is palpable because this test, we keep getting tested and we keep getting tested and we keep failing. So I would not blame him or her for abruptly ending this human experiment. See, I told you, I have a very different take on just about everything. Anyway, thank you for your support and for your donations. If you want to donate, go to my website and donate. Appreciate it. Um, thank you very much.